Hey, Joel. Can you hear me, Joel? Oh, you can hear me, Amy? Okay, thank you. You're you're on. You're good. Can you hear me, Joel? Yep. Hey, Joel. Yes. That's a delayed Joel? recording. Oh, you can hear me, Amy? Okay, thank you. You're you're on. It's all delayed. Hey, Joel. Okay, good evening, Crestwell community members, and welcome to the Reopening Schools Community Forum. My name is Mike Johnson. I'm superintendent, Crestwell School District. Thank you for taking the time to visit with us this evening and to learn about our blueprint for comprehensive distance learning. We have a slideshow to present our comprehensive distance learning plan to you. If you have questions or comments, please enter them into the chat box located on your Zoom menu. Your question, if you hover your mouse over your picture, the chat link will appear. Your questions will be received by our staff and then verbally communicated at the end of the presentation to the district leadership panel that will be here with me. The COVID-19 crisis has changed our world in many ways, in ways that we could not have imagined. To me, I view this situation as I would a book with 18 chapters. 18 chapters, one for each month beginning last February. While we have learned about the pandemic in the first few chapters, we don't know what the future chapters will present to us until we get there. The facts and conditions constantly change as the story goes on from chapter to chapter. We are now in chapter six, the sixth month since COVID began. We've just learned 12 days ago that we will be starting school online with comprehensive distance learning. This announcement caused the district to quickly pivot to implement a distance learning program that would educate our students to the highest levels possible. Prior to the announcement from our governor, governor on July 28th for the metrics that directed us to comprehensive distance learning, we have been planning for three learning modes, on-site, school as usual, a hybrid of distance learning and in-person instruction to ensure physical distancing as per state and county health guidance, and our third mode for distance learning only. Though we won't have all the answers for your questions at this time, please know that we have district teams working diligently to plan for comprehensive distance learning and any learning mode we need to pivot to 
based on the conditions of COVID in our community. But in response to the governor's order on July 28th and current state and county positive testing rates, we have decided to stick with option three through the first nine weeks of school until November 6th. Principals will be updating students and families regularly as COVID-19 conditions change. We ask our students and families to recognize that due to the conditions in the community, our planning must be fluid. So answers to questions given one week may change the next based on the ebb and flow of the virus. In fact, there will be updates tomorrow with guidelines from the governor and we'll adjust to those guidelines for our next information session. <clears throat> with the state guidance, excuse me for a second there. With the state guidance, the governor has directed all school districts to submit blueprints the state guidance for opening the 2021 school year was developed by the Oregon Department of Education in consultation with the Oregon Health Authority. In accordance with the guidance, each school district and each school has to develop operational blueprints for eventual reopening that addresses public health protocols, equity instruction, and family and community engagement. Prior to implementation, a plan incorporating those blueprints must be submitted to the school board, local public health authority, and the Department of Education for their consideration. See if I can get my slides to move here. So, with these blueprints, the ODE guidelines inform us that schools, or they require us that school have plans in place to ensure high levels of student engagement, align curriculum with grade level standards, and provide students with social and emotional support. The slide that you're looking at is a description of comprehensive distance learning per state guidance. This is the first question in our blueprint described as selecting distance learning as a school's instructional effects dates of this plan. So due to the COVID-19 and the metrics announced by Governor Kate Brown that dictate when schools can open safely, um, the, the district will start the year in comprehensive distance learning as directed. Model will center around core values of care, connect, and continuity of learning, and will guarantee the opportunity to learn for each student while prioritizing social, emotional, and mental health needs. Crestwell School District will remain in comprehensive distance learning for the first nine weeks of school. This will allow teachers to assess the academic needs of their students, provide time for teachers, parents, and students to establish comprehensive distance learning routines, as well as provide time for each school building to prepare for the safe return of students under the Ready Schools Safe Learners Guidelines. The Crestville District has been and will continue to lay the foundation for rigorous engaging and standards directed learning opportunities for both comprehensive distance learning and the hybrid model of instruction. The hybrid model of instruction, by the way, would only happen when it's safe for students and staff to enter schools. Our utmost priority is for the safety of our staff, students, and the community. 
The second question in the blueprint <clears throat> assures that we've reviewed the comprehensive distance learning guidance and that we're meeting all the requirements for comprehensive distance learning. So this is a general statement here from the district for question number two, or assurance number two, if you will. And then again, our third question in the blueprint for comprehensive distance learning. Now these blueprints that we're showing you are set up in general terms that with the requirements from the state. And we're responding to those terms with our assurances. However, this doesn't give you a true explanation of our plan. So we've put together a plan that describes comprehensive distance learning. Unlike last spring's emergency closure, the comprehensive distance learning model has specific requirements from the state. Continue to focus on student identity and belonging, care, connection, well-being, and mental, social, and emotional health. Actively engage and nurture relationships with students, families, and community. Center equity in all outreach and connect communication efforts with parents and caregivers. Provide high quality, well-rounded learning opportunities and encourage support and provide opportunities for active collaboration and, and communication between school leaders, teachers, and all staff. Unlike last spring, there are several differences in comprehensive distance learning that we're going into based on those guidelines that you saw or that framework. There are guidelines all throughout the guidance for comprehensive distance learning. Some highlights of the differences from last year. Last year we had pass or incomplete for courses and really not a lot of accountability for getting coursework in for grades. Thus the pass or incomplete occurred. However, we will have grades for students this fall. They will be aligned with the expectations of what in-person school would be. So we are complying with the state directed standards for curriculum and our courses. In the emergency situation, it was really new to all of us. So the rigor of the curriculum in some cases, and maybe most, um, wasn't where we would want it to be. Having a runway going through the summer and into the fall gives us the opportunity to prepare appropriately for online learning. So we're partnering with an online program called the CELUS to provide students with a much more rigorous curriculum during comprehensive distance learning. We'll talk a little bit more about a CELUS and explain what a CELUS is to you a little later in this presentation. And then thirdly, last spring attendance was optional uh, for students going into uh, cohorts with their teachers. But in this fall with comprehensive distance learning, attendance is mandatory and will be taken on a daily basis at all school levels. With comprehensive distance learning, we have requirements, and these are the elements that describe those. As I just went over the academic conditions for teaching and learning, we need engagement time. Instructional time is lined out for us in the guidelines. Assessment, grading, and reporting progress are mandatory. Not only that, that's just good practice. That's best practice for us in education. And everybody needs to know where they're at and where they stand with, uh, with the expectations and completion of assignments and making progress. Operational conditions, nutrition, we will continue to provide meals as we, as we did last spring. We'll have pickup sites 
and also deliveries using our district transportation on bus routes. Attendance is required, both teachers and students, and clubs and extracurricular activities where the state is, will be providing additional guidance around this, and we'll learn about it uh, tomorrow and for the rest of the week on extracurricular activities. In particular, OSAA has determined that extracurricular activities or sports programs will not, uh, will not engage until uh, the winter, until January. So we're getting more information on that one that's still developing. Student and family support, equity and access for every child, mental, social and emotional health support, and partnering with parents, families, and caregivers to include them in the work as we move along. In fact, it's more than including, we absolutely need each other with online learning. And digital learning needs, an infrastructure where we can provide access for all of our students uh, to online learning. Devices, we, as a district have moved to one-to-one -one devices, meaning that we have a device for every student in our district. We have iPads for all of our students in the primary grades at the elementary level. And from fourth grade on, we've ordered 400, 600 now, um, Chromebooks so that every student from fourth to 12th grade will have a device for online learning. Software systems for curriculum online. Uh, we have a CELIS. Our teachers in the primary grades or elementary level will also be using Seesaw in combination with a CELIS. And at the secondary level 612, our teachers will be using Google Classroom with a CELIS. And we'll explain how that works in a bit here. And professional development and training. Uh, we have a lineup for our teachers to learn how to work with the, uh, the Acellus online platform, as well as to continue to develop curriculum uh, with Seesaw and Google Classroom. And we're also entering in professional development with a comprehensive distance learning playbook, a system uh, that will help us look at learning online and be as proficient as we can with efficient delivery of curriculum. As I mentioned earlier, instructional time is required and it's best practice. We want as much time with our kids as we can have. So teacher facilitated time online with students, 50% interactive. Teachers will be with your kids 50% of the time. And we'll show you what that looks like later with the hours per day and per week. And the applied learning experiences and other engagement opportunities for teachers, families, and students. This is what it looks like in a day for K-3 with teacher-facilitated learning. That's contact time, two hours and 20 minutes per day, nearly 12 hours a week is the minimum. So the two hours daily is recommended at that level. And then as you can see, four through eight, two hours and 30 minutes or 12 hours, 12 and a half hours a week, and nine through 11, 14 hours a week, and then 12th grade. Comprehensive distance learning online program. So what we learned from our surveys from both uh, staff, from all actually students, parents, and our staff is that the, the online programs that we work at, we're working with last spring, um, you know, we, need to, we needed to do some work on that. We knew we could get better if we just had the time. So, at the district level, we began to research online programs, platforms, 
we looked at learning management systems is where there's a platform and a teacher uploads the curriculum, designs it and puts it all online. And then we looked at online schools, which provided curriculum, two separate platforms in their approach. But through our research, we found one platform that allows both, Acellus. Acellus has online curriculum available for courses, all courses in schools. And it provides the opportunity for teachers then to blend their design curriculum, assignments, videos, projects, whatever, tests, assessments, and then upload them into Acellus to deliver that experience and the curriculum to kids. Here's a brief video of Acellus and what it is. Acellus is the learning accelerator that is being called a game changer by schools across the United States. It combines technology and learning science to help students learn more efficiently and effectively. Proprietary technologies such as prism diagnostics and vectored instruction are built into a sense, making it very different from other online learning systems. Thousands of schools are switching over to a CELUS and are reporting elevated standardized test scores, increases in graduation rates, and more students transitioning into careers and college. Schools are also experiencing a significant impact in their students' ability to complete courses with greater mastery and with a more solid understanding of the material. So that briefly touches on what a CELUS is. There is much more to a CELUS. It really brings us an operational tool that engages both teachers and students and has parent-friendly access as well. But let's get a little deeper into how the science of a CELUS, uh, how it really works. A CELUS is the learning experience. Acellus uses cutting edge technology for the purpose of identifying where a student has a hole in their background knowledge that's making it hard for them to learn a particular concept. We call this prism diagnostics. In the same way a prism splits light into a spectrum of colors, prism diagnostics splits students into groups or spectrums based on similar deficiencies or holes in their background knowledge. When a student falls into one of these spectrums, customized personal and instruction is instantly delivered for that precise defect, filling in the gap in the student's knowledge so they can move forward with confidence. In the world of learning, students very often have many of the same holes in their background knowledge that are making them miss a certain kind of problem. While not all students have the same holes, the significant thing is, when looking at the data coming in from the students all over the country, they start to group themselves by the things they do not understand. When students give the wrong answer on a problem, Amazingly, a large percentage will give the same wrong answer. As we have studied this phenomenon, we have learned that special problems can be crafted so that the wrong answers entered by students identify exactly where they are needing help. The Acellus Courseware Development System compiles the wrong answer results entered by all of the students and identifies where there is a need for additional training and for which concepts. These groupings of wrong answers let us know what they don't understand so that we can then proceed to reteach and fill in the blanks. Let's see how this works. Imagine that a student has just completed a lesson on multiplying decimals. In the lesson, the instructor has carefully gone through the principles and the concepts on how to multiply decimals. Now the student is presented with a problem to test their understanding of the concept. In this case, the problem is 36.01 times 0.2. We work the problem by setting it up for multiplication, 36.01 times 0.2, and get the correct answer, which is 7.202. Most of the students get the problem right, but by monitoring and collecting the answers of every student that misses the correct answer, we notice something interesting. 38% of the students that missed this problem entered the wrong answer of 72.02. Since they did the multiplication correctly, we can see that these students did not understand the concept of this lesson that determines where to place the decimal. We immediately start another lesson for these students, which focuses on placing the decimal during multiplication problems. 24% of the wrong answers were 6.202. In this case, we can see that these students made a mistake in regrouping while solving this problem. So we give them extra practice on how to regroup when multiplying. 
7% missed the problem by entering an answer of 36.03. Here we can see that they are adding the numbers rather than multiplying. Acellus now pulls up a special lesson using these same numbers to show them the difference between addition and multiplication. Most of the other wrong answers are random and do not show a pattern. For these students, we pull up the more in-depth version of this lesson, hoping that with more instruction, they will be able to master this concept. As the use of an Acellus course continues, we are able to analyze more and more data regarding student responses and the effectiveness of the teaching methods. The Acellus courseware development system allows teachers nationwide to participate in this process and the refinement of each course. In this way, Acellus is a tool to advance the science of the learning process. Acellus uses cutting edge technology so while we, while we learn about Acellus, what, I, what really excites me is that it does have this platform where it provides additional learning opportunities for students who demonstrate, demonstrate that they have gaps in their learning or that, that maybe they're not quite getting it when the lesson is being delivered to them. They're not getting it in real time right there when they're engaging with the curriculum. So it will adjust and it will come back to the problem and continue to teach and work with our students. While it does that, there is also curriculum for social emotional learning. We also have curriculum where we can support students who have higher needs. And if we wanna accelerate our students, Acellus provides us with AP courses and other experiences and curriculum that we can then stretch our students out to, regardless of what point they're at in their learning. So for us in, in Cresswell, the, the leadership team, we were looking at how we could address a well-rounded education for all of our students um, in curriculum delivery. And I'm sure that our teachers will, ex will really appreciate this program and having this tool to be able to provide uh, online uh, instruction for our kids. Um, our special services director, Amy Aguero, is going to talk to you about student services and support for a few minutes. Amy, you got this? I got it, thank you. Hi, I'm Amy and welcome Cresswell community to this, to this platform. Um, so bottom line, yes, 504 special education, talented and gifted eligibilities. We are gonna do our best to work with families and our staff. And of course, as, as Mike mentioned, using the platform of Acellus um, and our case managers to support student needs. So there was a question that came up in the Q&A regarding how to best support students, especially at that high school level. Um, that may have some specific needs around reading and math and writing. And I do wanna say that not only will case managers be in touch with our families, but again, we will do our best to support personally, but also with Acellus. And the, the amazing thing about the program is as Mike just mentioned, and you got to see the wonderful videos, it really is a leveled instructional model that, that really is gauged toward the students' um, abilities. And if there's opportunity to reteach to create mastery um, and extra practice, that is, that is the platform that the Acellus um, uh, program will be using. So um, you'll see in this slide too, that when we do initiate a hybrid model, which we can talk about later as well, that there will be opportunity for students to attend on-site instruction. That being said, at this point, all special education and 504 needs will be served on our online mode. Um, and again, we'll do our best to work with families. And we are happy if you wanna reach out to case managers and or your administrators, if you wanna meet ahead of time to talk about those plans, we're happy to meet with you and, and do some brainstorming, but rest assured we'll be doing some, some conversation with our families. Um, I'll follow it up with our differentiated student supports. Again, I just wanna follow up with, with Acellus and that it really is a differentiated platform and we are able to provide students with an opportunity to um, take an assessment and they are put in at a level that best meets their needs. But in addition, we have some phenomenal employees, our, our classified and certified staff who are ready to support students. 
Um, you'll see on this slide that we have some, all, few, and many supports that'll be needed by our families and students. And I'll just kind of skim through here because I know you all have this slide in front of you, but um, you'll see that some supports that our students will need and that we are able and, and willing to provide, ready to provide. So special education, language, TAG, um, definitely there'll be a lot of parent information that continues to come out, counseling and mental health. Um, our superintendent just spoke about the social emotional piece that will definitely be addressed not only in person, but also through our online learning platform. Affinity groups, which, which speaks to shared interest with our peers um, and trusted friends, online study groups. There will continue to be offerings of, of free breakfast and lunch for our families, for our students, um, family food boxes, face coverings for those who need them when we do um, return to hybrid and or in-person instruction. Um, we know that some of our families will need a physical space to study and there will definitely be opportunity to, to partner with our McKinney Vento in terms of um, social services, health services, and housing. Um, all students will need a safe learning environment, a learning device, which we are working on the one-to-one -one ratio there as, as was mentioned, um, access to culturally relevant instruction, social emotional learning, and a positive relationship with with one or more adults in their, in their learning community. A few of our students will need supports around one-on-one -on -one EA or educational assistant support, um, GED supports in Spanish, transportation to um, access Wi-Fi, again, McKinney Vento supports and outside counseling. So we wanna be an advocate for our students in terms of getting them connected with the right resources. Many of our student um, supports will be around um, school schedules that match their siblings, breakfast and lunch at school when we get to that point, tech supports, um, advisory periods as needed, and parent information meetings in English and Spanish, I should mention too. As we look at the uh, reopening dates, uh, what we're planning for our school district, I also wanted to touch on a couple of other items. Um, while distance learning will include teacher facilitated learning, applied learning and breaks for nutrition and wellness, attendance will be taken daily and grades will be entered and issued. Just wanted to make sure that that's on your mind. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're now one-on-one -on -one with devices. So through the surveys, we learned that some of our families did not have devices at home uh, for the children, uh, for our students. And so we want to make sure that that's not anything that's, a, that's not a barrier to the learning online. Other things that we learned from our surveys was that some families do not have internet connectivity. Um, they don't have the ability to connect to the internet. So we're working with ODE, our uh, Oregon Department of Education and our local telecommunication organizations uh, to be able to provide hotspots out there where we can then get uh, Wi-Fi out away from our, uh, our city center so that in our most rural areas, our kids will have access to Wi-Fi. In another area, we learned that some of our families, um, their budgets are stretched and uh, having to pay for, for internet access is not feasible. And again, we're working with our Oregon Department of Education and telecommunications companies to be able to support those families and provide that internet access um, for them to allow every kid uh, to have the opportunity to be online with us. Uh, that's our goal. In closing, since last March, we responded to the COVID crisis and we came together as a community to support our teachers, students, and families in the teaching and learning process. This community demonstrated exceptional care for our kids. And I might add, you were mighty gracious to us uh, and very patient while we were learning, uh, I would say building the plane as it was flying. Um, we really rather quickly 
had to get on board with online learning. And I just can't tell you how much I admire this staff, K-12, for the great feat that they accomplished to do that. We have some real exceptional folks in this district. We have some exceptional leaders in this district. And our school board is determined that we're going to do what's best for every kid, as we all are. We made it through the spring together. And we've got to stay together through this school year to create positive outcomes for each and every one of our kids. We've got to stay together. I appreciate you. I appreciate your patience. I know my staff does. We are fortunate to be in the Cresswell School District and we really love our kids. So we'll bring the panel on of our district leaders and then we'll begin the uh, question and answer session. Thank you. It looks like our first question asks, how will teachers or classes be chosen at the elementary level? Amy Halley, do you wanna to speak to that? Sure, that's a great question. So um, I'm gonna answer it in two ways. One, um, class lists were created in the spring along with um, specialists, teachers, and admin to create our classrooms based on the fact we thought we might be coming back to full in-person learning. So we have created our class lists um, as we would in a normal year. Um, from there, I will just say that there could be some flexibility in that in terms of your student being able to have access to more than one teacher. We're, those are some things that are still up in the air depending on um, the course of the year. But for now you have, you have been assigned, your students have been assigned to classroom. Um, in terms of the content area and how their classes will be set up, we will be focusing on reading and math at the elementary level. Teachers will be utilizing universal design methods where they will integrate um, science and social studies and health content areas within reading and math. Um, and we hope to provide extra electives, if you will, at the elementary level, um, where we'd have some optional enrichment courses. Um, and those things are still in the works for planning, but we hope to provide um, other opportunities for kids to participate in some of those extra fun things that um, we would be able to provide in a full day of in-person learning. Awesome, thanks, Amy. The next question asks, will lunches be free or are we still paying for them? Um, we will still, we'll, we'll be moving into the, um, the regular school year where we provide lunches for our students who uh, qualify for free and reduced lunch. However, we'll never turn anyone away from a meal. We will make sure that every kid is fed in this, in this district. You, if, you, if there is something we need to know, please get in touch with your principal of the school. We'll, we'll take care of it. Next question, a parent from, of a sixth grader asks, I'm thinking my daughter will need extra help in a few areas, especially math and reading language arts. How can we get that help for our kids if they would normally go to the after school program for that help? I can speak to that. Hi, I'm Julie Johansson from the middle school. Um, currently, our schedule is set where students have a six period day, whether that's in person or with comprehensive distance learning. For half of each period, uh, teachers will be facilitating the learning and the lesson with the students, getting feedback on um, what their questions are with the lesson and providing direct instruction on how to do the tasks. Um, and typically about halfway through the lesson at that point, students who are understanding will be given the option to continue working on their own and students who require more help will either stay together as a group with their teacher for the rest of the period online or take advantage of um, small groups within some chat features. In addition to that, we are going to have ample opportunity for families to use office hours. Um, so students and families can email or call to get uh, specific help in regards to different concepts. And once we transition back to hybrid or in-person learning, we will be offering what um, 
is new to Crestwell Middle School this year. It's called ACE, which is Academic Success and Enrichment. And basically it provides additional services, whether a student needs math intervention, language arts intervention, STEAM enrichment, um, different pieces that really target your students' needs. And um, by the time we go to hybrid or in-person, teachers will have enough data to help form those groups and, and get your student what they need. Thanks, Julie. The next question is, uh, it's hard to do distance learning when you work 50 to 60 hours a week. How does this leave time to do schoolwork with our children? What time will teachers be doing attendance and how will that work with parents that have to work? Um, well, we, we certainly understand that, that parents have to work. We are trying, well, no, we're not trying, we are preparing a schedule for each school level. And that schedule is going to be uh, presented to all parents. I mean, we're currently working on that now on how we can coordinate between our elementary, middle and high school so that we don't have two kids possibly online at the same time from two different schools. Uh, we're trying to figure these logistics out, but, um, but there will be a schedule forthcoming to you from each of the, the principals. Will the district continue to use the Acellus curriculum when the kids are able to go back to school? We will. Um, we, we see Acellus as a great advantage for our district. Uh, we have an interest of having an online academy. Actually, we're developing an online uh, academy as we speak. And um, as far as as curriculum for in-person instruction, we always want that tool available, or any tools that will assist our teachers in providing what they think they need to get uh, to engage kids and to help them reach higher levels of success. So Acellus will be there with our district. Thanks. Next question. The school supply list at Bymart looks like it was created before we knew we'd be doing distance learning. Do our students need anything for school in addition to a laptop or iPad? I'll let the principals answer that question for each of the individual schools. And before we go on, I'm, uh, please excuse my rudeness, but we should have had each of our panelists introduce themselves to you. Some of them are new faces and names, and I need to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, they can tell you, you know, a little bit about where they came from and uh, before they arrived to Cresswell. But if we can, let's just kind of go through the panel and uh, let's do some introductions. Well, you've met Amy Aguero, and um, some of you may not have met Amy Halley if you're a kindergarten, if you got a kindergartner coming in. So let's start with Amy Halley. Hello, hello. Um, yes, I'm Amy Halley, the principal at Crest Lane. This will be my second year here. Um, I came from uh, Springfield Public Schools where I was an administrator and a school um, instructional coach and supported teachers. So I loved my time here in Crestwell. I'm looking forward to a time when we could be all back together again real soon. Um, so on to school supplies. Can I answer the question real quick, Mike? Sure. Okay. So at the elementary school level, absolutely. We, recre we created those lists assuming we would be coming back in person. So what I'd say for parents, um, it'd be really important for you to have at home just some paper and pencils, maybe even a sharpener so your kiddo can sharpen their pencil at home. Um, they may need something to color with or like to have something with to color with, but the majority of the school supplies, um, we're going to try to create as much of our instruction to need limited amount of um, tools. And um, as always, we will have um, our, our family resource center will be set up to be able to provide some resources for families as well, if that's a hardship for you to be able to provide supplies at home. And in terms of an iPad or a computer, we will have devices for you to have um, checked out from the school district so you don't need to rush out and purchase your own technology. Okay, uh, Chanel, would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Chanel Green. Um, I joined Crestwell here in February. 
and I come from 4J where I worked for 13 years um, at a couple different schools in elementary and middle school in a few various roles with my most recent one being an office manager. And my title here at Crestwell, I work at the district office and I'm the student success and community engagement coordinator. Um, I'm happy to be here. It's been a, a fun start, even though I joined right when everybody shut down. So I'm still getting to know people, um, but I'm happy to be on board. Julie Johansson. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Julie Johansson. I'm the new principal at Crestwell Middle School. I'm really excited to be here. I know I'm gonna get a lot of booze in the crowd, but I did leave California for Oregon. Take it for what it's worth. I'm very excited. Um, I was a principal. I've been a principal for 11 years in California, mostly at the middle school, junior high level. And prior to that, I was a teacher. I am excited to be a part of the Crestwell team. You have an amazing community. I feel very lucky and blessed to be a part of the district. As far as school supplies, um, basic paper, pencils, um, you might want a whiteboard, a small whiteboard or whiteboard pens if you don't want your student going through lots of paper. <laughs> Um, but outside of that, we have every intention of, of supplying the supplies that your student needs. I would also recommend a quiet learning space. Since school hasn't started, you might want to work with your student and figure out where in your home is the best place to set up a learning station, whether that is at the kitchen table or in your child's room or something else, um, I would suggest trying to figure that out now so that once you have your technology, that it's set up and conducive to learning. Thank you, Julie. Joel. Hi, I'm Joel Higdon. I, uh, I'm the Director of Technology Services and Facility Operations. And uh, we, the, our departments have been working really hard to uh, get those technology devices ready for you guys to hand out. We're pretty excited about the idea of having more technology in the hands of our students and our staff. Uh, and our facility folks have been really busy getting the buildings ready for that transition time that we're gonna get to have students back in our buildings. We're excited about that too. Uh, this is my embarking into my 23rd year with Crestwell School District, so I'm pretty excited about that. I, I, uh, um, I appreciate this district a lot and I, I appreciate the staff we have and I appreciate the leadership team and looking forward to a good year. Thank you, Joel. Jenny. Hey, good evening, everybody. I am Jenny Collins, and I am the new principal at Cresswell High School. Super excited to be here, home of the Bulldogs. Um, I came from Jufer School District uh, as principal. That's a K-12 school of about 350 students total. And prior to that was at uh, the Dallas Middle School in North Wasco County. Um, and also have experience working with dropout retrieval of high school students as an administrative um, program manager uh, through community college um, and academic advisor for the college. So I'm excited to be here at Crestwell and bring all of that to you, uh, work with the team of amazing people. As far as supplies, I know it's a little bit different for high school because you kind of meet with your teachers and they talk about what you might need for those classes but um, your basic paper, pens, binders, some way to organize, um, get your kids excited about being in school, that going to buy school supplies is always a fun thing to do um, and to get yourself organized um, sort of brings your head back around to the fact that school is going to start. Um, I love Julie's idea about the whiteboard. Um, it's a great way to share with your teachers when you're um, in a Zoom meeting. Um, so that you know that might be an option, um, but also excited about the Chromebooks that'll be handed out and the technology that'll go to our students. So thanks for organizing that, Joel and Mike. You're welcome. Thank you, Jenny. Christy, our newest member. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Yes, I am uh, brand new. I've only been on the job a few days here, but super excited and I've had an opportunity here to get to know some fabulous people that you are getting to uh, hear from today. So the last five years, um, I've been an assistant principal at Marist High School in Eugene. Um, and prior to that, spent 13 years um, teaching in Springfield School District and I have a background in special education. Um, on a personal level, I'm a small town girl myself. I graduated from Pleasant Hill High School and um, 
I had a little bit of a rival, I know, but I am excited to be in Crestwell where I actually bought my first house after graduating college and lived in Crestwell for about 10 years. And I love the community and I know the community and I'm just really excited to get to know all of you and your students. And I hope that it is in person very soon, sooner than later. Thank you, Christy. Brandon. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Brandon Stanridge, Assistant Principal, Athletic Director at the high school. I'm um, starting my second year in Cresswell, uh, 17th year in education. I spent 11 years as a teacher and coach in Southern Oregon. Um, and before Cresswell, I spent four years as Assistant Principal and Athletic Director at Bandon High School. Thank you, Brandon. Sarah. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Hansen. I'm the transportation supervisor at Cresswell and I'm headed into my 15th year here at the district. Thank you. You know, did I miss anybody? I think we got everyone. Okay, Chanel, commence with the questioning. Okay, our next question asked if you could give an example or two on what you mean by emotional social supports. What will this look like when our kids are virtual? Amy Aguero. Yes, um, I can talk a little bit about that. And then I know that our building administrators may have some time built in where they can talk about in real time what that may look like with teachers. But we have, um, opportunities where we work, uh, for example, opening up the day with an opportunity to teach around physical, social, emotional safety, awareness, build capacity for conversation, problem solving, a multitude of aspects around social and emotional health. In addition to just those daily conversations and lessons that we may have, there's opportunity too for our counselor um, staff, our nursing staff, to help support if we do have a student and or family in crisis to offer opportunities to partner with outside agencies. And so we can see the whole spectrum of how that social emotional health will continue to be in effect even through distance learning. Thank you. The next question asked, will students be able to participate in the music and athletic programs regardless of which educational model we choose to go with? Well, we do believe that there's going to be opportunities for electives and some uh, extracurricular activities and clubs. We, uh, tomorrow we'll get a new set of guidelines uh, from the Oregon Department of Education uh, that will speak to this and what groups might be allowed uh, around a school campus. Uh, at the current time, there are none allowed on campus. So that's where we are, but um, I know that the Department of Education and the governor are working on back to school guidelines, uh, in particular for right now, the state that we're in, uh, across Oregon with uh, comprehensive distance learning. So there's more to come on that. We'll be getting that out to you. I know Brandon is anxious to, to provide some information out there to coaches and athletes and uh, all those folks that are in the extracurricular clubs and programs. And, uh, but you'll be hearing more information from your principals on that one and our athletic director. We have a few questions about the Crestwell Online Academy. Wanting to know if it'll still be offered um, due to parents' work schedules. Will we need to look at the Crestwell Online Academy? And could you speak more on how that will look for our children in the elementary school age? And what's the difference between the academy and CDL? So we're still working on the academy piece and what it looks like. Um, it will be available that I, I mentioned earlier in the presentation. Um, Jenny Collins, our high school principal, has had experience with Acellus in the past. In fact, uh, she introduced it into the Dufer the school district uh, when she was the K-12 administrator or principal in that district. She might have a little a little more information for you on that one. I'll let her, her take that question if she can, or if she would. I would. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's definitely the district's intent to offer both um, an online academy for students to and families um, who are really looking to go more of a virtual online um, opportunity 
for the first semester or even the, the full school year. Um, and the difference between those two is not so much in the curriculum that's being provided because that curriculum will look the same um, for both students in the comprehensive distance learning and um, the, uh, the Crestwell Online Academy. So um, Acellus can support both of those platforms um, and and we'll work with families and students, especially high school students um, or also high school students to make sure that we're lining up what they need in regards to their graduation requirements, um, that we're fulfilling the requirements for their transcripts. And then K-8 can use the program um, to um, really kind of hone in on the skills and the classes that students need in order to continue to progress with their academics. So. Yeah, one of the features that we really liked about Acellus, well, there are all of them. I mean, we really liked them all, but it does uh, give us another platform where we can help our high school students with credit recovery courses while they're in their regular school schedule. So that's another piece that we uh, intend to utilize uh, quite often as we move forward into the future. Thank you, Jenny. The next question asks, what is culturally relevant instruction? One of our principals spoke to that, but um, you know, when we look at the backgrounds, each person's background, we all have a different background that we come, we come with. Um, we, we are all different. Uh, being culturally responsive means that I'm able to make that connection to every student that I have as a teacher or adult to adult and uh, to be able to make those connections and not have any barriers there from my background or your background. And then just being able to make that connection so that teaching and learning happens at its best. But anyone else is welcome to add to that. Thanks, Mike. Um, what times a day with the orientation, what time of day will the orientations be held so we know if we need to rearrange our work schedules to attend? Good So we are actually meeting tomorrow to kind of get more of that plan so that we can be more specific um, with families and with students and we will be um, sending that information out but we do hope to um, include some orientation times where so that parents can be available to attend those um, and get the information that they need. Um, so more to come on that, but we will get it emailed out to you after we're able to meet tomorrow. And I'll just add to that, um, we will try to get information pushed out to families in a multitude of ways, whether it be a pre-recorded video or paper, um, digital copies of written text of information. So we want to be able to meet your needs. We know you're working and trying to balance all the different pieces of information flowing your way. So whatever information that we do provide in an orientation will be made available to you um, in a different format at a different time. Thanks guys. Um, if a student is on an IEP program in fifth grade, will they get more time with one-on-one -on -one teaching? That's a great question. And I think I'll give you kind of a convoluted answer in that it really depends. So Acellus, again, is very gauged personally for each student's ability level. In addition, we're going to be offering through comprehensive distance learning, small group instruction, possibly one-on-one -on -one instruction. And so there's really a multitude. And, and again, I would just go back to, we definitely want to meet with the team and talk about how to best meet the needs of your individual student and where they, they currently are right now. Thanks, Amy. The information about starting distance learning states that K through three has different, less stringent requirements for returning to in-person learning. Are K through three currently planning to be distance learning only? Currently they are. We are distance learning, comprehensive distance learning K-12 at the moment. Um, we want to get our best effort out there into providing instruction for our kids to, for them to reach the highest level of learning. But our, our priority simply is safety, the health and safety of our students, our staff, and our community. And based on what we've seen in the metrics, it's not safe to bring large groups together. It just isn't going to be safe. So um, 
that's where we're at, K-12. We'll reassess where we're at. We're actually looking at the metrics as they come out weekly. But as you've noticed, whatever metrics we get like today happened a week ago. So what's happening currently this week, we're tracking the daily cases to see where it's going to be as far as the, the trend. Um, but what we've seen is that the cases are going up across Oregon and that they're increasing or they've increased over the last three weeks to where they are now. So we're monitoring that on a weekly basis. We will continue to do that. When we see an opportunity that we can make it safe for our students and staff to come back into the building, then we'll roll out a, in, an in-person uh, hybrid. And we'll start with our kinders and maybe K-1, actually K-1 is what we've talked about. And then we'll roll up and bring in the second graders following that once we have our routines down with our, our kinders and our first grades. And then the following group will be the third grade. And um, we'll see where we're at with our, our space at that time and our routines and the metrics and the whole thing. It just, uh, there are a multitude of angles on this virus and what happens with it. Our main concern is that we have an outbreak and then we have 20, 30 kids, parents, vulnerable people who uh, would be really sickened and hospitalized and maybe even worse. And we just want everyone safe, everyone. Amy. Um, there was another question about the K-3 in here and I'll just address it at the same time. It was asking about if, um, if this parent is asking about if they have older students, they, they'd feel weird about sending some kids to school and some kids being at home and wondering if their kids could continue on with comprehensive distance learning. Um, do you wanna address that, Mike, or do you want me to? Well, you can. Okay. Well, once we do move into a place where we can begin discussing hybrid, we'll obviously be surveying parents and staff and community as well, just around their comfort level. Um, and that's where, that is why we are setting up this online academy so that we can continue to provide online instruction and learning for families who are not prepared or ready for their kids to come to in-person learning in the school. So if that is you and you're somebody who's thinking, okay, now they're opening the doors and now I'm, I would actually like to keep them home for longer, you will have that option. Um, and so for any family, not even just because you have some kids at home and some at school. So um, that applies to all students. Thanks, Amy. This next question is for you too. Um, I registered my son for kindergarten online, but have not heard anything further on when and where to bring the paperwork to complete the registration. Oh, that's a good question. Our secretaries have been hard at work. Um, there will be an email coming from me, hopefully Wednesday, to give you some more guidance on um, the registration process. We're moving to online registration for all students K-12. And Jenny or Julie might be able to also chime in because this online registration is new to me as well. So there'll be some information coming um, to all families on how to get registered for the fall. And then I will be sending kindergarten families some additional information in a separate email correspondence. Thanks, Julie. Um, this one's for you. My student would like to know if they will still be using Khan Academy for eighth grade math. She's also wanting to know if the Connect Mentor Program for eighth graders mentoring sixth graders will still happen. Sure. So as of now, when I spoke to the teachers, Khan Academy is one piece of eighth grade math. But being that the district is transitioning to the use of Acellus as well as Google Classroom. Um, it will just be a piece of that. Khan Academy is not a um, kind of a, a complete standards aligned package as it stands by itself. It's used as a tool to embed within other teaching and learning. So it will be used, but it won't be the only thing that eighth grade math um, includes. And then as far as the mentorship between sixth grade and eighth grade, we are currently discussing how that might look with a comprehensive distance learning 
Um, Mike spoke to the focus on safety and one issue of having students do the mentorship um, online is making sure that the conversations that are happening between eighth graders and sixth graders are appropriate and safe for both students involved. Um, and so we've also discussed whether or not that would be more appropriate as we move into the hybrid. So we are working on it. We know that it means a lot to both the eighth graders as well as the new incoming uh, sixth grade students. But again, safety is our number one. And so we're just trying to work out how that might look in a comprehensive distance learning. Thanks, Julie. Really? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Mike. Excuse me. So um, in, in talking, so with the kinders and then also the sixth graders, just want all parents to know that we're looking at those transitions into schools. So kinders coming into the elementary school and what those transition activities will look like and fifth graders moving into sixth grade at the middle school and what that transition would look like and how we can embrace that. And also for eighth graders going to ninth grade and bridging that transition and, and, and what that looks like. So we're very cognizant of those transitions and really want to make those welcoming. Uh, we have a couple of minutes uh, for um, maybe two more questions, Chanel. I want to assure all the folks in the audience that we have your questions. And if we haven't answered them, we're going to post those up on our um, FAQ sheet and we'll have answers to those on there. But really keep an eye on that FAQ sheet. We, we, we monitor that. We, we want to use that as our source to continue to uh, get input from you and then also respond back to you as a community. Okay, Chanel, thank you. Um, let's see, let's go to this next one. It, um, it's kind of next one in the queue and it was about athletes. Um, with the pushback and shortened sports schedule and seasons, can we talk about the decision to practice for hours a week and then take three weeks off? As a former athlete and coach to have such a long break between practices does more damage to skills of the athlete than help. It does nothing for muscle memory and technique, which is what these student athletes need if they have any plans to be competitive competitive and successfully successful, especially if other schools in our league don't have the same restrictions. So yeah, so I can uh, talk a little bit about the, the decision making process. Um, first and foremost, like Mr. Johnson said, our number one concern is safety. And by rotating seasons um, that way through the weeks, we limit the amount of people who are on campus at one time or a, any given evening, especially as we start the school year where we are, we are having classes full, you know, essentially full schedule, you know, and kind of treating it like you would um, if we were back in person to where, um, you know, our students go to school all day and then go to practice in the, in the evening and the afternoons. Second, um, a lot of our students, most of our students actually are multi-sport athletes. And so trying to cram two or three sports into the same night or within a couple of different nights, um, especially if they've been, you know, kind of laid off and, and not doing as much as they normally would, um, also it, it impedes our safety. So we wanted to make sure that our students could focus on one sport at a time for the week, and then they could go through and, and cycle through. Third, um, you know, it's four months until the OSA calendar starts, and we, we're trying to guard against burnout and have people just get be fed up by the time November, December comes around um, in the hope that, you know, they stay fresh, they get instruction, they're moving sports, they, they kind of get a little break and, but they still get the, the mental health and social well-being of being, you know, at a workout and, and, you know, around a smaller group of their peers. Obviously, you know, a ton of this is dependent on the metrics and where we are. Um, you know, if we get back to hybrid after the, in the second quarter, you know, things get to loosen up and, and we get to do more stuff. And so as with anything um, in education with COVID related stuff, it's a, uh, you know, day by day, week by week basis. So this is a blueprint, but just like we have a school blueprint. Um, and then as things, you know, hopefully get, you know, loosened up within the school within the next couple of months and we can, we can relax some of those guidelines as well. So I just kind of want to add to that, if, if you will, Brandon. Um, Brandon and I and, and Jenny have been working together and Julie also on athletics and our kids and, and wanting them to have opportunities to socialize and also um, work with their coaches. But the less restrictive, I, I think I heard that word, 
about other districts out there, there are more leaning to the more restrictive where they're having no activities until we get into the winter term. So we're sensitive about our kids and, and wanting to be, um, wanting to invite them to be social and work together in, in this small community. Uh, we're, we're, we continue to work in that direction, but we may get guidance tomorrow that says different from the state or OSAA. Okay, Chanel. All right, here's the last question. Um, will there be tutoring sessions for kids that need more one-on-one -on -one or smaller groups? If not, will the Zoom meetings with students be video or audio taped so us working parents can help our children at a later time? Good question. Who wants to pick that one up? Um, oh. Go ahead. <laughs> um, the question went away. I was going to read it. Did you put it under answer? Sorry. Um, so as far as getting more help, um, I think was the question for kids who need more support. Um, we are building that into the day of each schedule for the schools so that teachers will have office hours, will have times for students to check in um, and be available to provide that support. Um, we are also working within Zoom and Google Classroom to have breakout sessions where um, educational assistants and other support staff around the school can provide a more one-on-one -on -one opportunity when students have questions um, to get those answered. Um, and then as far as recording um, the, the classrooms, that's, um, you know, that's probably not at this point going to happen um, just because of confidentiality um, requirements. However, uh, teachers are available um, for parents to ask questions of during those office hours as well. Um, and the way that Acellus works, um, teachers and, and parents can go in and look at how their kids are doing, particularly on those assignments um, from a parent view and from a student view um, and have the ability to ask questions of teachers as a result of that. One more question, Chanel. Um, let's end with the attendance one because I think this affects a lot of kiddos. Um, it's speaking to the middle school, but it's high school related too. Um, it says at the middle school level with attendance taken each period, if a student can't connect during that period, they are marked absent and can't make the material up. Um, I can speak to that, but that is a work in progress, and I have a feeling that that is going to be further explained um, in the guidelines tomorrow. As it currently sets in the guidelines that are most recent, it does say at the middle and high school levels that we must take attendance every period. And so the thought was that attendance would be taken during that live Zoom where students are getting the teacher facilitated learning and students are participating in the lesson. With that being said, depending on what is um, presented tomorrow, that could change. The great news about comprehensive distance learning is that students also have the opportunity to better their grade or master a concept if they don't get it the first time. So as far as attendance itself is concerned, again, hopefully they will be more specific about that tomorrow. But our goal is not for students to fail. Our goal is for students to learn and to understand the material. And so we're gonna do our best to meet the needs of families and kids, even if that's outside of a scheduled Zoom. And I would, would add to that, one of the guidance we're waiting to hear more information on talks about a 24 hour window as well as far as attendance. So we're taking attendance every class period there's also a clause in there about a 24 hour window of, of being, you know, checking in that class via email, um, responding to an assignment, turning something in. So we're waiting to hear some more clarification on that, what that looks like and how we kind of articulate that to families as well, because we understand that, you know, so it may be tough for, for kids to get on during the day. Okay. Well, I want to thank all of you who are out there in the community and took the time, your time, away from your family and activities to, to be with us uh, for this community forum. 
Uh, we really enjoy these opportunities to connect with you and we will continue to provide additional opportunities in the future. In fact, we'll regroup uh, this district leadership team uh, within the next week and uh, we'll start preparing for our next opportunity to connect with this community. Uh, again, we appreciate your patience. I, we know it's not easy. Um, we're doing the best that we can to get you information in real time and get out there with you. And we really miss our kids. We really do. And uh, we miss our teachers and our, all of our staff as well. And um, we'll get through this. We'll get through it together. Thank you again. Thank you to all the panel for being here. And um, we'll, we'll get information out to you as soon as we get it. Have a good evening. Good night.